Ed here with the Digital Digest, and today I wanted to share yet another update on my experience with the Asus Zephyrus G15. Now, for those of you that have been following my rolling coverage of this gaming content creation monster, you already know that I think it's one of the best laptops on the market here in 2021, if you can get your hands on it. This particular build is the uh, Best Buy model, 1800 US dollars. You've got that Ryzen 9 5900HS, eight core AMD CPU, complemented by NVIDIA's RTX 3070, a one terabyte Hynix NVMe out of the box in terms of what's pre-installed, 16 gigs of RAM, half of which is soldered to the board. The other half right here is user upgradable. Uh, so basically you can take the machine up to 40 gigs with a 32 gig DIMM, which I have right here. And if you followed my last uh, teardown upgrade tutorial, then you know that I upgraded the NVMEs and I didn't think I was going to step into upgrading the RAM. But after using the machine and essentially seeing that I was pretty much pushing the 16 gigs of RAM to the max when editing 4K and doing some uh, image editing, photo editing, and with raw files for my A7R Mark IV, I decided why not take a shot. Another thing uh, that came in uh, from Sabrent is the Rocket uh, 4 Plus 4 terabyte drive. Now, originally I had installed this right here, which is the two terabyte version of that drive, uh, basically one of the fastest drives on earth. And even though it's a Gen 4 drive and this laptop only supports Gen 3, it is of course backwards compatible, still one of the fastest uh, that money can buy. And the four terabyte version is no different. So initially I had put this in here in place of the Hynix as my uh, C drive and then the Sabrent Rocket Q four terabyte as the secondary drive but I did run into stability issues. Now, it was hard for me to pick up on them simply because it was occurring when I was off of the charger. And predominantly this machine has been living on the charger uh, and connected to an external monitor. So in the time that I would use it off of uh, the power brick, I was pretty much in silent mode with the iGPU mode on. So. Uh, living its almost ultra book esque life. Remember, this is a 4.2 pound, uh, 15 and a half inch gaming uh, workhorse that does get pretty solid battery life when, again, you have it in that silent uh, profile with the iGPU mode on. But when I started to try to use it just on a few occasions to do uh, some renders, some exports uh, on battery, that's when I started getting blue screens of death. And that's when I started my troubleshooting process. So it's been a really frustrating road. Uh, and that's what I'm here to tell you. You know, as much as I like this machine, it has become a very bumpy ride. And I, I am outside of my return period with Best Buy. Um, I am going to be upgrading uh, the RAM today. But what it appears to be is initially I thought it was a power draw problem that simply uh, this laptop, the G15, couldn't supply enough power to the Sabrent drives uh, between the Gen 4 high performance uh, overall power draw that they have. Uh, you know, you, you take a look at the stock uh, NVMe drive that came, which is a Hynix, very good drive, very fast. Uh, but when you look at the build, how thin it is, uh, you start to wonder if there's a reason they went specifically with this drive um, and whether or not I, I worried maybe the drives were making contact with the board. So the premise of today's video is to let all of you know, those of you who ran out and bought the two terabyte uh, in order to use it as an upgrade, you may want to return it because, I mean, if you're not having any stability issues, then it's definitely a problem with my machine. Um, I have not been happy with what's going on. Uh, I am going to pop out the Samsung RAM today and hope that, uh, you know, I see some sort of bump up in performance. Now, if you're wondering why I've got crucial RAM here, this is a 32 gig DIMM. Uh, by the way, a link will be in the description for everything you see here. Uh, you should be paying around 160 US plus tax for this. If it's more, it's just because there is a supply and demand issue. There is a shortage on these. And if you're wondering why I went with Crucial, it's because the eight gigs that is soldered to the board is Crucial. Uh, of course, a uh, division of Micron. Now, why Asus went with Samsung, 
your guess is as good as mine. In all likelihood, it was a matter of fulfillment and cost effectiveness. Um, I would not be worried about the, the tape here. Uh, so I'm just going to go ahead and upgrade the RAM now. But in a perfect world, my goal is to get these two four terabyte drives running together. But even though I thought I had sourced the issue, and there's the crucial 32 gig DIMM, and everything that I've, by the way, read regarding uh, making this upgrade has been that basically in synthetic benchmarking, it you take a slight hit, believe it or not. Yes, the first 16 gigs will still be in dual channel, but after that, uh, you are looking at, as I just mentioned, taking a hit in uh, synthetic benchmarks, but it should still give you headroom for multitasking when doing anything that's intensive like gaming or video editing. So that's something, or photo editing, that's something that does appeal to me. So we'll see how this fares. I'll update all of you on how that goes. But more importantly is the NVMe story. So at first, what I did was I pulled the two terabyte, put the Hynix back in and everything was perfectly fine with the four terabyte Rocket Q as a secondary drive. Then when this four terabyte came in, I said, okay, I'm gonna try it. I know there's some kind of power draw issue. So I'll pull this drive out. Things seemed stable with the four terabyte uh, Rocket 4 Plus, but uh, again, I encountered problems on battery, which indicates again, a power draw issue. I also contacted uh, my rep at Sabrent and they informed me that they likely agreed that this had to do with the G15 and power draw. And I can confirm uh, for any of you that are wondering, there's nothing wrong with this drive, the two terabyte uh, Rocket 4 Plus or the four terabyte Rocket Q because in the Aero 15, both flavors that I had and reviewed, I had absolutely no issue on battery or off battery running it. So uh, call this an advantage to Intel possibly over AMD, which is still what Intel is bragging about for good reason with their 11th gen with uh, Gen 4 support for PCI uh, Express NVMe drives. I, you know, it could just be that Asus, the, the machine frankly is inferior uh, when it comes to stability. It could just be the power as I've mentioned but the Gigabyte Aero 15 does not suffer this issue. And, you know, I'm outside of my Best Buy 45 day window. So this is really disappointing to be encountering. And the reason you're getting this long winded, you know, story is that I think it's important for all of you to know, and it gets more complicated. So I thought maybe something was contacting the two terabyte drive. So I moved it over to the secondary slot, changed obviously the boot priority that didn't help, still had the same issue. So that convinced me it's gotta be power draw. So then I said, okay, look, worst case scenario is, let me try putting this drive, again, the four terabyte Rocket Q is my primary drive uh, for the operating system and just seeing if I can get away with that. Well, that worked, didn't seem to have any issues, uh, video editing on battery or gaming on battery. Uh, then decided, okay, we already know that the system was able to support the Hynix and the four terabyte, because that was the very first move I made to basically determine that there was a power draw issue associated with the Gen 4 drives from Sabrent. And I said, well, I shouldn't have an issue throwing the Hynix in the secondary slot and just adding one more uh, terabyte to overall system uh, storage capacity. Well, then the shit really hit the fan. Now, essentially, uh, the machine is looking at the four terabyte Q drive, even if it's the primary boot drive and saying it's giving me an error code as if Windows is corrupt. Um, so I can't even get the machine to boot. So the reason the four terabyte is actually back in here is because it will boot to this drive. It will boot to the two terabyte, but as I've stated, unstable unless on the power brick. So here initially where I thought it had to do just with a power draw, I'm now wondering if there is an underlying, a more deep-seated issue. My next step is to go back to the Hynix as the primary drive, which I really didn't want to do. I mean, when you have uh, NVMe drives ready to upgrade and this machine is pitched as being able to be upgraded, and then you go to upgrade and you can't, um, and it's at no fault to the NVMe drives, but rather the actual system, it is incredibly disappointing. So this is a word of warning. I said over and over again that the one terabyte Hynix uh, that comes uh, preloaded, pre-installed on this machine is a fantastic performer, and it is. Hynix makes 
some fantastic NVMe drives. They don't have the range of capacities uh, and overall breadth that, of course, Sabrin does, but they're still one of the best manufacturers on the market. I really feel like Hynix, Sabrin, and Samsung are the three to beat. But uh, right now, the only safe bet, it appears, is to stick with the Hynix and uh, you know, I'm going to see if I can at least recreate having the four terabyte Q as a secondary drive. This is all really disappointing to me, uh, you know, especially with the fact that I am outside of the return uh, period. And, you know, hopefully, and this is not because I hope to, to just be so unfortunate, so lucky, of course, that's sarcasm to have a piece of crap here. But any of you that followed my coverage of this machine from the very beginning, blue screens of death, um, as well as overall stability were concerns I had. And this is my first AMD based machine in God knows how long. Now I'm not blaming AMD, but to be clear, you already have enough information to know that with the Gigabyte Intel based Aero 15, I had absolutely zero problems. Whereas here, I have had to go through so many headaches now in the, what is it, roughly a week since I shared the original upgrade tutorial video with all of you. So obviously uh, I owed it to all of you to make you aware of this issue. You know, if you've purchased this drive or maybe a four terabyte version and it's working, please drop a line in the comments, let everybody know. That means I know that I have a piece of crap here that needs to be uh, RMA'd with Asus. Uh, I'm gonna reach out to them obviously because I know there's nothing wrong with the Sabrin drives. Um, and the fact that it's just so flaky that I had consistent, uh, you know, issue, no issues with the four terabyte Q as the primary drive on its own. Uh, and then all of a sudden it reverted back to the same behavior makes me think that what I once thought was a power draw problem really is something wrong with the G15 altogether. So Again, any advice from all of you out there in uh, YouTube land is appreciated, but this is more of a public service announcement about uh, the instability that I've been going through. And, you know, if you've purchased it and you haven't installed the Sabrent yet, you know, go ahead and try it out, test. You now know my issues were off battery uh, or rather on battery initially. But the fact of the matter is, is that I just, stability is totally out the window at this point. So. Uh, hopefully, I get things back in wor working order. I'm confident that I will. Um, hopefully, it does just end up being a power draw issue. But the fact that, again, uh, the four terabyte Rocket Q was perfectly fine on its own for a few days, and now um, I can't get it to work is troubling. And I've yet to nail it down. You know, here I came to share a video with all of you thinking that I had a solid solution to uh, the issue that basically I had created myself. By thinking I could, you know, do at least six terabytes in this machine, uh, forget the eight terabytes you see in front of you now with the four and four. Uh, but at the end of the day, I can't help but feel like this is part of the G15 being, I don't want to call it a disposable machine, but between the soldered RAM and the power draw issues, if that's what it is, it just feels like a contrived, um, you know, machine designed to fail a day outside of the manufacturer's warranty. And I'm only saying that because I'm going through so many problems uh, and I am experienced at doing this in case any of you are wondering. So this is an incredibly straightforward process, especially with Sabrin's offline cloning device, which makes it idiot proof, which is why I've been re uh, recommending this over and over again, because it is so seamless, so simple, as long as you make sure that your target drive is larger than your source, you have to make sure, don't think because you have uh, two one terabyte drives that the one terabyte target is larger because if it's a Samsung drive, it will be physically smaller than a lot of drives on the market. I can't te uh, uh, testify to that with uh, this specific drive, but in general, you have to be sure. I mean, the safest way is literally to go with a two terabyte, uh, but at any rate, had to give you all this update because really aggravating and right now, I just don't have a stable G15 anymore. Uh, and hopefully going back to the Hynix rectifies that. Uh, but even still, uh, if I end up having to live just with the Hynix, uh, I don't have to tell you my whole trade-off for giving up a Thunderbolt port on this machine was knowing that I could make the internal NVMEs robust at least 
four terabytes worth. Now, the fact that I'm considering just going back to a single terabyte is depressing to say the least. We'll see what the additional 32 gigs of RAM brings to the table. I think it's just gonna give me headroom for multitasking. But before I can care about that, I obviously have to see some stability from the machine that it can just do what it's designed to do. So this may seem like a bargain, but it's become a headache that right now, buyer's remorse is in full effect because uh, with either of the Gigabyte Aero 15s, there was no problem uh, with NVMe upgrades. And, you know, be, to be very clear, you know, when I reached out to Saverin, they told me right off the bat, my contact, that, you know, it could be power draw. It sounds like power draw based on what I was describing. I thought I had figured it out. And, you know, if I were to have, let's say, thrown an eight terabyte drive in here, it absolutely, there are virtually no laptops on the market that can support their eight terabyte NVMe from a power draw standpoint. But there's really no excuse for the two terabyte. There's no excuse for the inconsistent performance of the G15 with the Rocket Q4. Uh, so once I have things finally solidified, I of course will update all of you. But for now, this has just become uh, a terrible mess that I wish I wasn't sharing with all of you because those of you that follow my channel know how fond I am of this machine. But as of right now, this is a hot, stinky turd until things get rectified. A piece of shit would be a compliment. Any questions or comments, please feel free to post them. Hit that like button. And as usual, please feel free to subscribe and please stay safe. Later.